In this video, we'll be reviewing the disassembly and assembly of the first stage of the RICS 2V3B compressor. To remove the first stage for service, we must first disconnect the suction, discharge, and pressure gauge lines. Notice that the suction line is not connected. In this case, we do not need to remove it. Start with the pressure gauge line. The lines can be disconnected by using a 9 16 open box wrench to the compression nut. Immediately after removing the tube, cover the open end of the tube with painter's tape or a clean plastic bag to prevent foreign particles from entering the oxygen line. The pressure gauge line can be moved out of the way by first slightly loosening the compression nut at the top pressure manifold and then rotating the tube away from the first stage. To disconnect the discharge line, use an 11 16 wrench to loosen the compression fitting on the cylinder head. As with the pressure gauge line, the discharge line can be easily moved out of the way. Make sure that the compression nut on the other end of the line is slightly loosened and that the tube is rotated out of the way. Cover the open end of the tube with painter's tape or a clean plastic bag to prevent foreign particles from entering the oxygen line. At the top of the head, you'll find four studs. These studs secure the first stage compression unit to the top of the frame. To remove them, use a 9 16 wrench or a socket with a ratchet and loosen the studs. Do not lose these pieces. Place them in a clean area. Take off the cylinder head and cylinder. You can remove the head separately, but be careful as the valve assembly may fall out. Immediately inspect the cylinder for scratches and uneven wear. Run a gloved finger along the inside. Scratches deep enough to be felt by your finger will likely require a new cylinder liner. The first stage piston is attached to the connecting rod. Rotate the connecting rod until it reaches bottom dead center. This creates easier access. Inspect the piston for noticeable signs of wear. The first stage piston consists of one rider ring and two compression rings. The compression rings are split. To remove the compression ring, gently pull one end of the ring out and wind the ring out of the groove. You will find that under the compression ring is an O-ring. This O-ring is called the backing ring. The backing ring can be removed with a hook. The rider ring is split, however, the split is much shorter than that of the compression rings. The rider ring can be easily removed by gently pulling them open until they can slide off. To install the rider ring, gently spread the ring and slip it over the end of the piston until it fits into the groove. New backing rings can be similarly installed. Compression rings are installed in the opposite manner to which they were taken off. To install the rings, grab the thin end of the ring and start it into the groove. Gently wind the ring into the groove, trying to minimize bending. Before moving on to the cylinder and valve head, make sure to cover the piston with a powder-free glove to prevent contamination. Now examine the head of the compression assembly. Inside the head are the valves that control flow into the inlet and discharge lines. Carefully remove the valve assembly from the head. Be careful not to scratch or contaminate any of the components. This is the valve stack spread out in order. It consists of O-rings, reed valves, and a valve plate. During regular service, reed valves and O-rings will be replaced. Using a clean flathead screwdriver, remove the valve stop and reed valves from the valve seat. Under the valve stop, there are two reed valves. You do not have to replace the valve stop. Remove the remaining O-ring. There is a slight bend in the valve stop. The valve stop should be oriented such that the end should stick out slightly when installed. With new reed valves, screw the two reed valves and the valve stop back onto the valve seat. Remember to check the orientation of the valve stop. The valve stop should stick up slightly to allow clearance for reed valve movement. Apply Crytox lubricant to the two O-rings. Then, seat the small O-ring in the groove on the same side as the newly replaced reed valves. When installed, the large O-ring should sit in the groove on the valve plate body. Take note of the roll pin in the cylinder head. There is a corresponding hole in the valve seat. Place the valve assembly in the head by lining this hole in the valve seat with the pin in the cylinder head. Using a clean, soft, blunt object, Rotate the valve assembly until it seats on the pin. Take note of the indent on the reed valve. It fits into a corresponding notch on the valve seat. Using a clean pick if necessary, replace the O-ring on the top of the cylinder. 
Remount the cylinder and cylinder head back onto the studs so the suction remains on the right and the discharge on the left. Rock the cylinder slightly from side to side while pushing down. Push down the cylinder and head assembly back over the piston. Put the four nuts back onto the studs, finger tight. With a torque wrench, tighten each nut in small increments. Skip across each nut in a star pattern before increasing the torque. Stop when 30 foot-pounds of torque is reached. Reattach oxygen lines and tighten. 